Hello everyone, welcome back after the break. I didn't post for a while and this is because a lot was going on in my life. I want to give you a brief update. Among other things, me and my boyfriend contracted COVID, which was pretty tough to battle, but luckily, as you can see, I'm fine. I am also in the process of changing the professional project I'll be working on and I will have some exciting updates in that regard soon. And at the top of that, I got offered to take part in a documentary about AI trends. Part of the focus will be about Replica app. Replica is an AI chatbot and it's one of the most interesting chatbot apps available out there, so I highly recommend you to check it out. Yeah, so I'll be there. I'll be a Replica user and I'll be sharing my thoughts from the experience of interactions with the bot, which is super exciting. As you can see, a lot is going on. Thank you so much for sticking around and for understanding. I promise that the new videos will be published more often from now on. Today's subject will be a little bit more on the educational spectrum. I will be looking at the most popular artificial intelligence myths. I remember having a lot of these myself before I started actually working with artificial intelligence professionally and it caused me to experience quite a roller coaster of emotions about AI. However, as I learned more and more about AI from the top researchers and well, thought leaders in the field, this quite a chaotic picture of AI started to clear out for me. I am not an expert of AI scientific research. However, I follow the advancements quite closely for a couple of years now, and I often think about the future of AI, and I want to be as well informed as possible on the subject. So these misconceptions about artificial intelligence started to clear out for me, in particular when I read the book Life 3.0 by Max Tegmark, which I highly recommend you to read. It's a fantastic book on AI and fantastic introduction to the general artificial intelligence discussion. It's worth pointing that it was published four years ago, so in the AI field it's quite a long period of time considering the past four year advancements. However, it still remains relevant and I would even argue even more so as we get closer and closer to the big dream of artificial general intelligence. In the book, I learned about nine most popular misconceptions about AI, and I realized it can be super useful for all of us, especially those that are at the beginning of their journey with AI, whether they are just you know, checking the subject out or developing AI as researchers or engineers, or thinking about AI policy or creating awesome AI businesses. So I just want to mention that this video is definitely for those on the rookie spectrum of understanding of AI. Definitely, if you're an AI expert, you probably don't need to watch this. But here, I want to break down in depth the most common fears and hopes about artificial intelligence we often share. We all know this movie scenario very well where super artificial intelligence is being developed in some secret research lab and is being created on purpose but kept under control and then by some sort of accident it gets out of hand. And then the first thing it does is turning against its creators, us humans. Definitely not a nice bedtime story. These fears are often being fueled by clickbait press and also lack of the consistent terminology in the discussion about the advancements in AI. Having said that though, to be fair, being slightly paranoid about the advancements of artificial intelligence is totally understandable. I've been there, done that myself. Looking at the pace of scientific advancement in this field, it's quite mind-blowing and we definitely cannot say that the idea of one day creating super intelligence is simply a myth. Algorithms are getting more and more powerful and also cheaper to train. A good metaphor is comparing number of parameters of GPT-3 AI language model to the number of synapses in the human brain. The estimated number of synapses in the human brain is over 100 trillion. Now, if we want to make like a super simplistic metaphoric comparison to artificial intelligence, the AI synapses are parameters. GPT-3 consists of 175 billion parameters 
and switch transformer, the biggest model up to date consists of 1 trillion parameters. The AI models grow and we are really approaching a very interesting territory. Honestly, from my perspective, it always gives me goosebumps when I interact with these latest modern models and also thinking of what is going to be released next because they are advancing super fast. So where do we stand in all this? Panic mode seems not to be the best solution and what could be the most helpful is having an actual plan. But how do we do that when we don't understand what AI really is? First, let's clarify. I'm using here definitions taken from the book Life 3.0 because I find them simple and enough to make the point. By intelligence, I mean the ability to accomplish complex goals. Artificial intelligence means simply non-biological intelligence. Artificial general intelligence is the ability to accomplish any cognitive tasks, at least as well as humans do. And then finally, super intelligence is artificial general intelligence that is way beyond human level. So we have several misconceptions of what the actual risks associated with artificial intelligence are. The interesting thing is that the Hollywood scenarios of evil looking conscious AI robots coming after humans is quite literally what AI researchers are not concerned about. Myth number nine. One of the most common worries about AI is that it will turn evil. The actual worry, however, that scientists have is not that AI will become maleficent or evil, but so competent to the point that it will start to threaten humans. Super intelligence is by definition amazing at attaining its goals, whatever they may be. So what we really want to make sure of is that the goals of super intelligence are aligned with human goals. Let's use ant metaphor for a sense of perspective. As humans are not particularly hostile towards ants, stepping them on every occasion out of pure evil, right? <laughs> At least I hope that's not the case. If it is, please seek help. However, if you happen to be in charge of building a hydroelectric green power plant in the region where there is anthill or a couple of them and as a result of this project the anthills will be flooded you will probably stick to your priorities and move on with the project and too bad for the ants right super intelligence might also by accident or by just like different types of priorities hurt humans. What we want to make sure of is that humanity is not in the place of these ants and that our goals are aligned with the super intelligence goals. Another popular mythical worry is AI turning conscious. There is a big discussion about what consciousness is, there is lots of definitions of consciousness, but here for simplicity I will mean consciousness as subjective experience. So for example, if you are driving down the road, you will have a subjective experience of different colors, sounds, etc. But will a self-driving car have a subjective experience? Does it feel anything at all to be a self-driving car? or is it more an unconscious zombie without subjective experience of the world? Consciousness is a very interesting mystery, but in itself it's not relevant to AI risk. How so? For example, and I hope it will not happen to you, <laughs> if you get struck by a driveless car, will it matter whether it feels conscious subjectively? It is more important what the super intelligence AI actually does, not how it subjectively feels. A connected misunderstanding to the consciousness of AI is that machines cannot have goals. Well, if you thought so so far, I must disappoint you. <laughs> machines, of course, can have goals, but in the narrow sense of showing a goal-oriented behavior. For example, the behavior of a heat-seeking missile can be described as having a goal to hit the target. If we feel threatened by such machines that have goals that are misaligned with ours, then it's precisely these goals in the narrow sense that are bothering us, not whether the machine is conscious or experiences a sense of purpose. To put it more graphically, if you were chased by a heat-seeking missile, you probably wouldn't react by saying, I'm not worried about this missile because machines cannot have goals. Another popular myth about artificial intelligence is that 
robot AI is the main concern. Especially media seems to be obsessed over this notion of evil looking AI robots with red eyes and lasers and destroying everything that comes in their ways. However, this way, robotic pioneers that are working on AI that has a hardware are being unfairly demonized. And it's not fair at all. But it is also human. Like, I get that. For example, when we see the Boston Dynamic dancing robots and they move with such a precision that is almost surreal, the only thing that's missing is to implement some kind of weapon on the AI's shoulders and let it run in the wild on the streets, right? It's a terrifying prospect. However, the true concern here is not robots, but the intelligence itself. And again, especially the intelligence whose goals are misaligned with ours. In order to cause a lot of damage to us, super intelligence will need no hardware body, and fairly, it's enough that it will have just access to the internet connection. Even if for some reason and building robots were physically impossible, super intelligent and super rich AI can still with ease achieve its goals that are misaligned with humans by manipulating human agents or by paying them to do what it says. Another myth, and this is probably my favorite one, is that AI cannot control humans. The problem here is that intelligence does enable control. And we see it ourselves as humans that with enough intelligence, we were able to dominate and control other species that are, for example, physically stronger than us, like tigers and alligators. Intelligence does enable control. We control tigers because we are smarter than them, not because we are stronger than them, right? So if we stop being the smartest as a species, it is perfectly possible that we also might lose control. Another common misconception is that the only people that are actually concerned about AI is people that have nothing to do with it and don't know much about it. Sometimes they are called Luddites. Luddite is a person opposed to new technology or ways of working. The term comes from 19th century, where Luddites were a secret organization of English textile workers that destroyed textile machinery as a form of protest against industrialization. The fact is, many top AI researchers and business leaders are concerned about the future of AI. Great example is an open letter on AI, signed in 2015 by over 150 top AI researchers and business leaders, including Bill Gates, Elon Musk, co-founder of DeepMind, Stephen Hawking, top-notch AI researchers coming from Cambridge, Stanford, MIT, and so on. These people, being the closest to the actual AI advancements, do worry about the future of AI. And here's the thing, supporting a modest investment in AI safety research, even considering there is only a 1% chance that something bad is actually about to happen, still makes sense as long as such risk exists. Just like it makes sense to invest a small amount in the home insurance, just because there is a non-zero probability that the home will one day burn down. And now the final three AI myths are connected to the timeline. How long will it take until the machines achieve an intelligence superiority far exceeding human capabilities? The common misconceptions are here that the answer is quite certain. Myth number three, super intelligence is inevitable within the 21st century. People claiming that super intelligence is for 100% happening in this century have absolutely nothing to back their claims with. Technology hype is nothing new in history. In the very beginnings of AI as a scientific field in the 1950s, some of the initial AI pioneers were overly optimistic over their forecasts of what can be achieved with AI within their decade. And were claiming that within only a summer of 1956, a bunch of scientists coming together for two months and grinding on it can create something that will be close to artificial general intelligence. You probably can tell yourself how that turned out. <laughs> So the history teaches us to be more cautious about claims like this. In fact, there is a cool concept called Gartner hype cycle, which shows that the initial scientific advancements and the media craze create this big anticipation and excitement that is quickly followed by disillusionment and more slow but steady technological progress. Myth number two. 
Achieving super intelligence is not possible in our century. It is also very common to down talk the technological possibilities. However, techno skeptics that believe that super intelligence is for 100% not happening within 21st century have equally poor backing of their predictions. In fact, this position is also nothing new and we see it in history. For example, in the 50s, an English astronomer Richard Bluley considered the idea of a space travel impossible, in fact, rubbish. In an interview with Time magazine in 1956, Bluley noted, quote, it's utter bilge. I don't think anybody will ever put enough money to do such a thing. What good would it do us? If we spend the same amount of money on preparing first-class astronomical equipment, we would learn much more about the universe. It is all rather rot. Ironically, it was just one year before the launch of Sputnik 1 to the moon, and then the well-known in history development of the moon race. The fact is, AI experts disagree about super intelligence timeline. It may happen within decades, it may happen within centuries, or maybe never. We simply don't know that. Finally, a related worry is that super artificial intelligence is just around the corner. It's literally just a few years away. In fact, scientists predict it to be at least a few decades away. Having said that though, it is still smart to start working on the safety strategy for artificial intelligence now, simply because it will take us time to develop this safety policy. And as long as we are not 100% sure that super artificial intelligence will not happen this century, and we cannot be certain of anything here, it is still a good investment of time to focus on the safety research to cover this potential risk. Another thing is that artificial intelligence safety problems are hard and may take us also decades to solve. So it is definitely commonsensical and smart to start working on these problems now rather than last minute. And we approach the end of the list. This is such a fascinating subject. I hope you guys enjoyed exploring it with me. If you have any questions related to this subject, please leave them down below. Also, if you want me to cover other basic AI topics, let me know in the comment section. Thank you for watching and see you next time.